Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Math Puzzle Crash Course. We've got a little simple problem here, or at least I think it's simple. It's a mixed operations problem. This is one of the ones that I've uh, I've seen online uh, pop up recently. These things seem to keep getting recycled all the time, but um, um, it's uh, 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 times 0 equals 0. All right, so if you want to, you may already know this one. It's, it is pretty easy, but uh, um, if you're not really sure you want to work this one out, you can go ahead and pause the video right now, and we'll come back and work this one out together. All right, again, this is pretty simple stuff. Um, the main thing is you need to remember your order of operations convention. Uh, and in this case, multiplication has precedence over addition. Um, now, so 6 times 0 is 0. Uh, that leaves you with 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 0 equals 18. Um, now, what I see is I see a lot of people out there answering 0 uh, because they think that you add 6 plus 6 is 12, and then you add another 6 is 18, then you add another 6, that's 24, 24 times 0 is 0, and that's incorrect. Uh, and the people that are doing that are forgetting that multiplication has precedence over addition. That's part of the order of operations. It's one of the steps. Uh, and there's reasons for that. We're going to talk about it here in a second if you're, if you're not sure. Uh, there are some other people out there. I've even seen uh, a few people answering 24 as an answer which is really bad, uh, and I've seen some really strange explanations for that. Um, I've seen people claim things like, well, uh, 6 times 0 is still 6, 0 times 6 is 0. And I don't know where people are getting that idea, and I've seen a lot of peop people answer that. I think it's mostly some older people that have just completely forgotten about uh, multiplication by 0, but... It doesn't matter if it's 0 times 6 or 6 times 0. They both equal 0. The same thing. Like, you got 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is still 6. Um, so I don't know where that comes from, but the answer is definitely 18. Um, again, I mentioned the order of operations. I know I've, I've beaten this one probably like a dead horse on some some of these videos. I've got a lot of order of operations videos out there. Uh, but the reason I concentrate so much on it is because I see, uh, at least from a lot of the people answering online, there's really a lot of lack of knowledge. People have really forgotten what they were taught. Um, and again, I said multiplication has precedence over addition. And why is that? Well, it's really simple, folks. Multiplication is repeated addition. Think of multiplication like a shorthand for addition. It's a lot easier to write 6 times 0 than it is to write out uh, 6 zeros and adding them together. Now, of course, 6 times 0 is the same as 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. And it doesn't matter how many zeros I add, they all add up to 0. 6 times 0 is the same thing as saying, go ahead and add up 6 zeros and tell me what that adds up to. That's what multiplication is. Uh, so uh, first of all, you got to keep that one straight. Um, and so, like I said, multiplication has precedence. And why is that? Well, because you can replace the multiplication with the equivalent addition. These are the identical. Six times zero, again, is the same as adding six zeros, which leaves you six plus six plus six, plus adding up all those six zeros, still gives you 18. So whether you write it this way or whether you write it this way, the only answer, the only, and I do mean the only correct answer, is 18. Um, <clears throat> now, just a brief note, and I've got other videos. I'm going to put links in the description. I'm not going to go through all this stuff uh, because I, I already know what a lot of the responses are to this. I've already mentioned there's the people out there who think that 6 times 0 is 6, 0 times 6 is 0. I've, I've dealt with that one. Um, but another common thing is I see people say, well, I entered it in my calculator, and my calculator told me the answer is 0. Uh, and it's because you're not if, if somebody gets that answer, they're doing one of two things. 
They're either hitting the equal sign after every operation, which is wrong, or they're using a calculator like a cheap dollar store type calculator you'd buy at the Dollar Tree or Dollar General. And those calculators, um, they're only really good for adding and subtracting. They use what's called immediate execution mode. So basically, it's actually acting as if it's all hitting the equal sign for you after every operation. Those kinds of calculators cannot handle multiple operations typed out all in one expression, okay? Um, so you have to be careful what kind of calculator you're using. If you're using a, a scientific calculator or a calculator uh, that has memory, the memory type, uh, like an internal stack chain, those can, um, they operate in like an expression mode where you can enter the entire expression and then hit the equal sign. But a lot of cheaper calculators do not work that way. Uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, the Windows uh, on a Windows PC, if you're using, you know, pretty much any version of Windows, the standard mode calculator, uh, I think that's the default calculator. It actually operates in immediate execution mode, and if you use that calculator, it's going to come up with zero because it's taking each number. Um, it's not really meant to be used by entering an entire mixed operations expression. If you switch that calculator to scientific mode, you will get the right answer of 18. So be careful with calculators. Um, you, you really need to understand them. Uh, just because you get an answer of zero on your calculator does not mean you're correct. It does not mean that, uh, well, some calculators, you know, uh, use order of operations and some, you know, just don't. You just need to understand the calculator. Um, and again, uh, the other argument that a lot of people bring up is they said, well, there's no parentheses, so the answer is zero uh, because they memorized PEMDAS or whatever acronym, and they seem to think that, well, if you don't have parentheses, you throw everything out the window. Well, that's not true. Uh, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Take a look at the area formula for the area of a circle, pi r squared. What do you do first? You do the exponents, the r squared, first, and then you multiply by pi. So please explain to me that, show me the parentheses in the formula for the area of a circle. Parentheses are not necessary. It's one step of the order of operations. You don't have parentheses. You don't have exponents. You move on to multiplication and division. Um, and again, it was not taught left to right back in your day. That's the other one. That comes up a lot, and uh, it's not true. Um, I've got plenty of examples. Uh, no textbooks were written that way. Your teachers were not that incompetent, uh, so that's not true. Um, I do hope this video has been helpful. Again, uh, the answer to this problem is 18. Uh, hope to see everybody in the next video. Uh, I'm going to try to get a few more out there, get some new, uh, get some new subjects going here. And of course, if there's any type of things you are interested in seeing, uh, and that goes all the way up to calculus. That's fine. I did, I did take plenty of calculus back in the day, um, so that's not a problem. So anyhow, I wish everybody luck. Hope you're having a great day. See you all in the next video.